Chimamanda grew up in Nigeria and now divides her time between there and the US. Her experiences in both countries inform her writing. In Half of a Yellow Sun, she tells the story of the 1960s Nigerian Civil War through three intertwined characters, Olana, Richard and Ugwu, while Americana critiques racism in the US through the character of a Nigerian immigrant forging a new identity. Chimamanda says it's in America that she first learned about race. The book details descriptions of black women having their hair dressed. The author says she's a fundamentalist when it comes to hair. Her speech on feminism was used in a Beyonce track. She called for an end to teaching girls to shrink themselves and their ambition. Well, you say that in America you discovered a new identity and that was being black. What did you mean? Um, when I was growing up in Nigeria, I didn't think of myself as black. I didn't need to. I, I think we have many identity markers in Nigeria, ethnicity, class, religion, but not race because everybody's mostly black. Um, so when I came to the US, I, I, I realized that I was seen not as Igbo or Christian or Southerner, all the things that I was in Nigeria, but as black. But it wasn't even that. It was that this black meant something mm. and that this something wasn't a necessarily good thing. Well, given that, what do you make of the current state of US politics, particularly in regard to the Black Lives Matter movement? I, mean, I think Black Lives Matter is doing something really important, which is that it's, it's, um, it's a movement that, that, and I don't think it's necessary, I mean, it's, there's something very sort of ad hoc about it, which I think is a good thing as well, but it's raising awareness about things that have existed in, in the US for a long time. So I don't think that the violence against um, African Americans by, by the police is necessarily new. It's simply that um, technology, cell phones, is making it more overt and that Black Lives Matter is forcing it into the consciousness of Americans. And I think that's, I think that's an important thing. OK, let's talk Trump. You wrote that uh, short story imagining Melania Trump as First Lady. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know about flattering, I wonder, I, but I thought it was humanising. I, I like to think that people who read that story came away thinking of, of um, Trump's wife as, as human. You know, she wasn't... I was interested in Trump's daughter, Ivanka, who, uh, who seems to me too reasonable and too intelligent to really think that her father is the right choice for the US. And so I wanted to write a story in which, you know, it's the women in his life who have motivations and who have their own motivations and who have agency and who, um, and who somehow um, humor him, who are very much aware that he's, he's an interesting person. I think that he, I think he's a narcissist. I think that, um, so there's a sense in which I wanted to imagine the women in his life kind of humoring his, his neediness, his pathologies, but really knowing deep down that he's pathological. <laughs> and so, so in the story, his daughter secretly supports Hillary Clinton because she, of course, knows who really is, is the better candidate for the US. I mean, you support Hillary Clinton. Are, I you, do. are you inspired by her as such? Very much, very much, yes, very much. Why? I'm not an American citizen, so I can't vote. Um, but I'm, I'm inspired by her because I think she's a hard worker. I think that Hillary Clinton represents what happens in many, many workplaces in the world, which is she's the woman who does the hard, gritty work. She might not be charismatic in the way her husband is. But, you know, we're not running for... Um, being president really isn't about charisma, in my opinion. It's about who, who's willing to do what in many ways can be drudgery-infused um, work. And I think she is. I also think she's very intelligent. And I think just going back and looking at her life, she's always been interested in social issues. She's always been interested in, in making a difference, in making a change, in doing. And I admire that. Now, Chimamanda, as someone who's written about the experience of being an immigrant, what do you make of the immigrant debate, the immigration debate here in the UK? I find it confusing. Why is it confusing? Um, well, for one thing, I've always found it a bit interesting that this is a country that... Um, when you look back at the history of this country, it's a country that, that in some ways, that the people were, were immigrants without asking the countries in which they were immigrants what they thought. 